for a juicy treat, tropical mangoes, $1.69 each. USDA bone-in strip steak, just $16.99 per pound, saving you $2. Select varieties of Arm & Hammer laundry detergent, only $5.99 for a 50-ounce bottle. Save $0.90 cents on Minute Maid Punch Juices, $3.99 for a 59-ounce cart. Kingsfoot Match Light Charcoal, only $9.99 for a 3.1-pound bag. All stores open Monday through Saturday from 7 a.m. until 10 p.m. and Sunday, 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. You can count on us. Live from Bermuda Broadcasting, this is ZBN TV 9 News. You're watching Bermuda Broadcasting News. It's Friday, the 1st of June. I'm Diane Brewer, and thank you for joining us tonight. The government today announced it has asked the governor to declare November 4th, 2019, a national holiday in honor of the contribution of the Portuguese community in Bermuda. In making this surprise announcement in the House of Assembly today, Premier David Burt praised the contribution of the Portuguese to Bermuda and noted, quote, we all came from somewhere else and have individually and collectively committed to this series of islands called Bermuda, end quote. Mr. Bird emphasized the importance of diversity in Bermuda and recalled the first wave of Portuguese immigrants who arrived here in 1849 from Madeira. Next November 4th will mark the 170th anniversary of their arrival and the celebrations will be held the following year. It's not clear yet if the holiday will take place every year. The news was welcomed by Andrea Manes de Souza, the Honorary Council of Portugal. She spoke to our reporter to write it's obviously an honor for us to, to be recognized in this manner. We do feel that we have contributed immensely to the Bermuda we all call, call home today. And uh, it's, it's, uh, for us, it, it's, it means so much because it, it's acknowledging that we are part of Bermuda. So that uh, I, I announcement took you by surprise. I'm guessing you had no idea he was going to announce it. I, I, well, I, they did contact me this week to let me know that they was coming. Um, and I was asked to attend this morning, so I knew the reason why I was attending the House of Assembly this morning. Um, but it obviously was, it was very, um, very exciting news for us in our community. How significant are the contributions of the Portuguese in Bermuda? Well, they, they arrived back in the 1840s, uh, and they've helped. They've started from, I think initially they were brought over for winery. I don't think that quite worked out. Uh, but they've been immensely contributors to farming and agriculture in Bermuda. I think over the years they've added on in the hospitality industry, the construction industry. I think if you, if you look around, you, you do see the, our influence um, in our traditions and our culture and of the people. So I think, uh, I think Bermuda is a melting pot. I think Bermuda wouldn't be the wonderful place it is to live if it wasn't all of us that came from somewhere else that made Bermuda what it is today. The Minister of National Security, Wayne Keynes, has again criticized the failure to appoint a Bermudian as the new Commissioner of Police. In a ministerial statement released today, Mr. Keynes said the lack of a suitable qualified candidate from the island meant, quote, we must challenge the governor's oversight and management of the leadership of the Bermuda Police Service, end quote. He added that his comments were not directed at the current governor, perhaps indicating that it was the system of governors appointing commissioners rather than the individuals that he was criticizing. The minister also said the appointment of a British superintendent, Stephen Corbishley, to succeed Michael De Silva showed obvious failings by the current police commissioner in terms of leadership, talent, management and succession planning. In other news, the Digital Asset Business Act is one step closer to becoming law after being debated in the House of Assembly today. The act would set up a regulatory framework for investing in blockchain and cryptocurrency businesses. It's the second bill in a series of legislative initiatives to grow Bermuda's fintech sector. Legislation to regulate initial corn offerings was passed last month. Tony Waterman sat down with Charles Thresh, the head of advisory at KPMG Bermuda, on the sidelines of the KPMG Fintech Summit yesterday. Today, and he told her what he sees as the main questions market participants have when it comes to fintech. The great themes like blockchain and robotic process automation and um, data and analytics, these are big things that um, we hear a lot about but we don't necessarily hear answers that are really germane to people who do business in Bermuda. And so um, that's the, why the agenda was set up and the take home for me is that we are relatively underdeveloped in, in each of those areas really. The intention is there and I think that's probably informed somewhat by people getting excited by the, the material but um, the actual implementation is, is quite you know 
relatively under de underdeveloped. I mean, some of the major players, uh, international business, are you know putting their toe in the water, and and, and some of it even implemented and experimented. But I wouldn't say say large scale fintech has hit Bermuda yet. Why is that? Um, I think the government's position has definitely made a difference. Um, it's made people perhaps address those questions that I referred to um, in, a, in a much more sort of um, inward looking way. Um, but I would say that there's much more about fintech other than, uh, you know, um, blockchain and or, or sorry coin offerings and, and cryptocurrency. The use of blockchain, which is which is a technology that underlies it. Um, coin offerings uh, is one that has you know profound potential operational um, benefits and, um, and 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 yet it is still relatively undeveloped here in Bermuda. Uh, it's uh, I don't think there's any one sector that's really grasped uh, the opportunity yet. Um, why is that? I think um, a degree of inertia. Um, the, the, the business models in Bermuda are relatively settled. Um, uh, there, are, there has been disruption in certain sectors uh, over the last um, 10 or 15 years, but they haven't been technology driven. At this stage, do you think that there is an actual danger in fintech being underdeveloped here? But although you know, we're a small island, uh, we have uh, large businesses here and they operate on a global stage. And there is a danger that um, their competitive position may be eroded if they don't adopt technologies which are genuinely relevant to them and their customers. Um, so uh, yes, I, I would say that there's a danger. Is it an imminent danger? Um, I wouldn't say that, but uh, you know, there's always a burning platform uh, when it comes to innovation and, uh, and, and failure to adopt emerging technologies. So uh, I, it's not a, something that, they, that anybody can sit on their hands and do nothing about. There's ways of doing you, things that you do now better, uh, and then the other end of the spectrum is is being a disruptor and actually um, uh, bas making the way things are done now obsolete. I think the established uh, businesses in Bermuda are very happy to consider things that make their businesses run better the way that they do business now. Um, disruption, I think you're more likely to see that through new entrants to the market. I mean, you know. There are some innovators in the in the established business community, but I think of its nature, the small, nimble, new entrants to the market are the ones that are going to be the disruptors. So um, I think what the government are doing is trying to bring new business to the island. Um, of course, they don't want to um, prejudice existing business, but they do want to put um, you know some competitive pressure in there for the greater benefit of the economy, and I and I do understand that. Uh, obviously, there needs to be balance, and we will see how that shakes out. And we'll have more for you after this short break, including all the latest weather news. Stay with us. You can count on us. Save $1.20 in Oscar Mayer turkey bacon, only $3.99 for a 12-ounce package. Red Ripe strawberries, $4.99 for a one-pound package. Save $1.01 on Breyer's ice cream, just $7.19 for a 48-ounce tub. Hot price on Kraft shredded cheese, $3.89 for an 8-ounce package. Save 66 cents on Kool-Aid drink mix, only $4.99 for a 20-ounce tub. Visit our website at www.marketplace.pm for more weekly specials. Blurry-eyed following your eye appointment? Had one too many? Or simply too tired to face the drive home at the end of a long night? There are lots of reasons why you couldn't and shouldn't get behind the wheel. Introducing HomeSafe from Security Associates, the island's only car and driver home delivery service. Please schedule with us and a HomeSafe driver will deliver you and your car right to your door. Whatever your reason for not driving, you can always get HomeSafe. Call 298-2626 for pricing and to find out how you can become a member. Or visit homesafebermuda.com. Terms and conditions apply. Surface Trims has been serving Bermuda for over 25 years, supplying and installing tile and natural stone. We have a large and stock selection of beautiful porcelain wood planking, including our exclusive Bermuda cedar tile. You will also find Bermuda's best in stock selection of countertops, including natural granites, exotic quartzites, and sile stone engineered quartz in all the newest colors. Our team will be happy to help you. Stop by our showroom at 17 Serpentine Road or give us a call at 295-8005. It's a center of world-class
cutting-edge science based in Bermuda. The Bermuda Institute of Ocean Sciences is an internationally recognized center for research into the oceans. And one of the keys to its success is the research vessel Atlantic Explorer. The ship goes to sea at least twice a month, playing a vital part in the Institute's work. We'll be looking at the vessel itself and its crew next week. But in the first part of a two-part special, our reporter Hal Davis met some of the bioscientists during a recent research trip. It's a routine trip to sea for the Atlantic Explorer. But that's actually one of the reasons why its work is so important. The ship and its predecessors have been sailing roughly every two weeks to the same patch of ocean since 1954. It's part of Hydrostation S, regular deep sea observations in an area about 30 miles southeast of Bermuda, creating the longest continuous oceanic database in the world. This complicated device is a CTD. It's dropped into the sea and then samples can be collected at various levels. Today, all the way down to almost 3,500 meters. Steve Bell is one of the scientists working on the program. We can measure, we've been doing it twice a month, so once a fortnight for the last X amount of years, and now we can see if there's any changes, long-term changes. And that. So that's with oxygen, and we do your whole profile, we take 24 samples from the surface down to the bottom, and uh, for salinities, so we can get a nice profile of the ocean. Such long-term measurements enable scientists to record the rate of natural and human caused change to oceans, including impacts on salinity, marine life and oxygen content. The data gathered has shown that since 1954, the ocean has been heating at a rate of nearly one degree every 50 years. It also shows that the ocean's surface is becoming saltier and carbon dioxide levels are rising, resulting in ocean acidification. And it's CO2 levels in an era when climate change is a global concern that are the chief interest to some. The main thing actually about this program is that we are trying to understand how the CO2 from the atmosphere is interacting uh, with the ocean. So basically how the CO2 can be transferred from the atmosphere to the surface of the ocean and then to the deep of the ocean. Other programs are carried out too from the ship. The Bermuda Atlantic Time Series study has been running since 1988. It provides data on seawater chemistry, biology and physics. Such long-running experiments mean the Atlantic Explorer has to be based in Bermuda. But the island's location as a volcanic plug out in the Atlantic is also significant. One of the reasons why the Atlantic Explorer is based in Bermuda is location. Just a few hours sailing from the island, the water is 3,500 metres deep. That's ideal for the experiment scientists want to carry out. This is one of the shorter trips the Atlantic Explorer makes, just one day at sea. Though even today, another instrument is launched to carry on checking on the health of the sea before we leave for shore again. It's more cutting-edge science from what appears to be a harmonious team. The scientists are quick to pay tribute to the crew of the ship. These guys know exactly what they are doing, so make our life much easier. So I think it's one of the most important things about this boat, about this science, is team working. It's like, it's impossible to do anything without these guys together and it's amazing how, how much you can learn with, uh, you know, with the pilots, with the crew members, even with us, with the science crew. So it's, I think for me, it's the most important thing is the team working. Yeah. And next week, we'll be returning to the Atlantic Explorer to see how the ship and the men and one woman who crew her cope with working and living at sea. Howell Davis, Bermuda Broadcasting News. Weather now and what can we expect this weekend? Let's find out from AccuWeather headquarters. AccuWeather is presented by BFNM Insurance Group. We now go to AccuWeather headquarters. The BFNM Insurance Group is pleased to bring you tonight's AccuWeather forecast. I'm AccuWeather meteorologist Brittany Boyer, and oh, well, it's been a pretty soggy week here across the island. Last seven days, we've picked up over an inch and a half of rain and. Well, you probably don't enjoy the rain all the time. It's actually helping us with the rainfall deficit that we have this year. We're inching closer and closer to being exactly where we should be. And you know what? Looking at the uh, radar here, we're not under the influence of that Bermuda high. So next couple of days, I'm going to say that it's going to be an unsettled start to this month of June. And speaking of June, today is the start of the Atlantic hurricane season. We don't have anything uh, on the foreseeable future that we're going to be tracking here that will be 
be impacting the island. But just know that hurricane season is officially starting. We already had Alberto impact uh, the southeast this week. The next named storm will be Burl. But Again, we don't have any significant impacts in the near term here in Bermuda. We've had a lot of clouds, though, building across the island, and that's exactly what we're going to be seeing as we head into the weekend and also into early next week, which is why I'm calling this an unsettled start to the month of June. But, hey, last month, temperatures were actually warmer than normal for the month, so we'll have to see what we can do uh, with this new month right on our doorsteps. Temperatures right now in the mid to upper 70s across the island. Humidity, it's up there, 75 to 80 percent. Winds are coming in out of the south southeast, 10 to 15 knots. The water's nice and warm, but over the next couple of days, you are going to be dodging a couple of showers around. Waves outside of the reef between three and five feet, although we do not have any kind of uh, marine alert out there, uh, at least for this evening. Perhaps in a couple of days, as the winds pick up, the seas get a little rougher, uh, we could see some changes coming from the Bermuda Weather Service. We'll keep you posted on that. All right, for tonight, if you have any Friday night plans, it will be a mild night, 75. Five degrees, partly cloudy, but there will be a couple of showers as we head throughout the rest of this evening. As I mentioned, there's no marine alert, so your upcoming tides coming in. High tide coming in tonight at 11:26. Low tide tomorrow, right at 6 a.m. on Saturday. Now for your Saturday, temperatures are going to be in the low 80s. It will be a little bit breezy, perhaps a couple of sprinkles, but we're not expecting any significant precipitation. Meantime, out toward the east coast, there will be showers and storms with some locally heavy rain, especially into the southeast. New York City, 81 degrees, mid-70s in Boston for tomorrow. Our current conditions right now, again, we're not tracking anything tropical to speak. Uh, things are pretty good in Jamaica, 88 degrees, 84 degrees in Barbados. Your extended forecast here as we head into the end of the weekend, Sunday, a bit more cloud coverage, 81 degrees. So you can see temperatures are in check, but we'll still have some unsettled weather early in the week. There could be a cold front that could bring some showers and possibly even some thunderstorms. AccuWeather was presented by BF&M Insurance Group. My name is Kevin Roberts. I'm a taxi driver slash ambassador. My father's with BF&M, so am I. My, half of my family always been seen to be good for me to find me. I tried a different provider at one time, but I wasn't too happy with the competition because right then it took too long to settle claims. They questioned every claim, and I never really had that problem with BFNN. I'm quite happy with it. Carl, you're not entering this race. You cannot do it. You're not strong enough. It's too dangerous. Please, son, listen to your father. I can do it. I'll show you, Dad. I'll show everyone. I can do this. I know I can! Who's there? Show yourself. So you're looking to join the Derby. Come with me if you want to win. You're faster. stronger. You'll be better than the rest of them. You'll be a winner. Can you feel it? The ducks are coming back. Rubber Duck Derby, June 3rd, 2018. Adopt a duck to support Friends of Hospice. Welcome back. The organizers of an anti-gang event at the Mount Zion AME Church say they hope to bring people together when they meet tomorrow evening. The meeting called The Connection is expected to see former gang members, community workers, young people, and educators gather. It's an attempt to build links between different groups whose lives have been touched by gang violence. Desmond Crockwell, one of the organizers, has appealed for people to come along and help build a safety net for young people. Um, we're looking to have relationship building. That's the objective of the event. Um, that's why it's named the Connection, because we want people to come there and um, really build a relationship with those that are there, like-minded people. Um, we are expecting and we have invited and we have people that are professionals who work with at-risk young people and people in the streets and, you know, people that are in jail and whatnot. And we also have 
uh, this that have been on the street, this that have lived their life, so we can have that connection going on. Um, and we want people that are concerned, neighbors, parents, teachers, you know, um, those that are affiliated with young people in any way, sports presidents, uh, principals of schools, you know, those type of people, um, charitable workers and organizations. We want those to come out also to connect and really um, be with like-minded people. And just a reminder, that meeting will take place tomorrow evening from 6 p.m. onwards at the Mount Zion AME Church. In other news, East St. Joseph's University rugby team in Philadelphia have continued to pay tribute to their teammate Mark Dombrowski, who died during a visit to Bermuda in March. The athlete was here with the St. Joseph's Hawks to compete in a rugby tournament, but he suffered a fatal fall after he became separated from his teammates during their last night on the island. The team and the fans have been wearing shirts bearing Mr. Dombrowski's name and number ahead of competing in the Penn Mutual Collegiate Rugby Championship this this weekend. The MVP award for the championship has also been renamed in his honor. His coach's words at a funeral mass in April have been shared ahead of the championship. Three simple principles for the team and for life. Be humble, be respectful, and be excellent. You're excellent, the best you can be. So much of which is reflected in the way Mark approached practice his teammates, the opposition, the game, and life itself. Still to come, we'll have all the latest sports. That's just in a few minutes. Price Rate is your one-stop shop with something for everyone. Household goods for kitchen, bedroom, and bathroom. Aisles of bulk groceries at value prices. A complete selection of fresh meat and produce. And an extensive range of frozen items to cover every meal. Wines from around the world and beer and liquor at discount prices. Visit Price Right at our two locations in Pembroke and Warren. There's always something new and always something for everyone. If you would have came to me a year ago and tell me that you could reverse my diabetes, I'd have been skeptical. I have come off my medication. I'm fine. My eyesight is gradually coming back. And if you can control this disease, you can reduce the likelihood of having blindness. You can reduce the likelihood of amputation. You can reduce the likelihood of having dialysis. Would this mean it's a perfect cure-all for everybody? No. This is one piece of a larger puzzle. Physicians, they do care about you, but I think this one went the extra mile. I'm here to tell you that it works. Call Dr. James, ask him for help. Don't be afraid. As Bermudians, we've got too much pride, and we're killing ourselves with food. Just come if you have diabetes and you'd like to take control of it. This just might be the program for you. Sports now and a Bermudian track star has received all-American status. Earl Bazin has that story and much more in tonight's Sports Report. Tiara DeRuza, a sophomore at Shaw University, has been selected as a second-team NCAA All-Star track and field athlete for the outdoor season. DeRuza was the lone second-team All-American recipient from Shaw University after finishing 11th in the discus with a top throw of 45.43 meters. The Bermuda Football Association have announced the Under-17 Women's World Cup team that will face off against USA next week Wednesday in Florida and then face Costa Rica on Friday. There's been one change to the team that started the tournament in Nicaragua before hostile environments ended the tournament there. The player coming into the squad is Chechile Doling. The Bermuda Football Coaches Association will kick off their intro to coaching course this evening with President Richard Todd explaining what the participants will go through. So the intro to coaching course is uh, a new initiative. Uh, it is geared towards um, those individuals who have no prior coaching education um, training. So that could be existing coaches who have been coaching without uh, coaching education, parents, uh, PE teachers, you know, anybody who's interested to, to begin moving down the pathway uh, and moving forward and getting a little bit more insight um, into uh, the mythology of coaching. Bermuda Football Association Technical Development Director Maurice Lowe is looking for all the National Academy coaches to achieve the highest level of coaching available. That's on our mandate now, or coming into effect just with coach licensing. So come September 2018, all National Academy coaches would be licensed at the UEFA 
B license. So we have quite a number of our academy staff that, that are on the current uh, B license co um, course that's coming up in June and September and October. Vandals have struck yet again at the Bernard Park on the Nepal court, leaving the president of the Bermuda Nepal Association, Kamel Evans, extremely frustrated. It's really discouraging for us um, as the number one sport in Bermuda for females. Um, we have our challenges, as you know, um, with trying to gain funding and things like that. So we, we made an attempt to at least give them a uh, um, a court that they can play on that gives them a little bit sense of pride, that makes them feel like they're in a professional environment. And once again, to have someone come by and to damage the courts, um, obviously, as far as we know, for no reason whatsoever, but other than to probably have a little fun or whatever it might be, it, it's, it's really, really disheartening. Bermuda Nepal Association Summer League season resumed at Bernard Park last evening. In the opener, the Bermuda Under-19 team defeated the Under-16 team 25-6. to Nabila Nazir led the Bermuda Under-19 team with 10 goals, while Kariah Simmons and Jade Johnston scored two goals each for the Under-16 team. The BAC Women in Blue defeated the BHB Angels 33-12. to Nikita Trot scored 21 goals for the BAC Women in Blue, while Charlene Bogle-Gomez scored 10 goals for the BHB Angels. The new kids on the court edged PHC 16-14. to The new kids on the court got 14 goals from Jalen Hines, while Tanae Glassford, Tiara Simmons, Renika Simons, and Aliyah Rashid all scored 3 goals each for PHC. Bermuda Commonwealth Youth Games and Carifta Swimming Championship multiple medalists Madeline Moore and former Bermuda Carifta Swimming Championships multiple medalist Emma Harvey competed in the Plymouth Leander National Swimming Qualifiers. Harvey finished second competing in the women's 16 and over 50 meter butterfly final. Harvey touched the wall in a time of 28.32. This was after recording the third fastest time in the preliminaries of 28.40. During the women's 16 and over 100 meter freestyle preliminaries, Harvey finished 12, clocking a time of 59 99, with Moore finishing one spot back in a time of 101.17. Harry finished just off the podium during the women's 16 and over 100 meter butterfly final when she clocked the fourth fastest time of 104.24. During the preliminaries, Harry would finish third, clocking 105.32. In the women's 16 and over 50 meter backstroke final, Harvey finished eighth, touching the wall in a time of 39.94. During the preliminaries, Harvey was fourth, clocking 31.02, while Moore finished 12th, clocking 31.60. As we pre Previously reported, Moore won the women's 16 and over 50 meter freestyle final with a time of 26.20. She clocked the fastest preliminary time of 28.58 with Harvey finishing 14th in the time of 28.22. Kamal Lavrock and his Nottinghamshire second teammates picked up a three-wicket victory over Durham seconds in their second 11 trophy match. Nottinghamshire won the toss and decided to bowl, and they would bowl Durham out for 115 before replying with 119 for seven. After a shaky start in chasing the target, Lavrock shared a six-wicket partnership of 32 runs to take his team from 45 for five to 78 for six, where Lavrock was out for the second highest in the inning of 23. Lavrock faced 30 deliveries, hitting four fours in his 37 minute stay at the crease. The Wednesday night sailing first series has ended after six races, with Air Force winning the series with nine net points. Crossfire was second with 11.5 points, and Mayhem finished third with 16 points. Honey Badger was fourth with 22 points, and Back in Black rounded out the top five finishers with 26.5 points. I'm Earl Baisden with Bermuda Broadcasting Sports. Thanks, Earl. Art now and 14 people have checked into the Hamilton Princess for an extended stay. Actually, they're never leaving. We're talking about the latest art installment at the hotel. The simple life-size figures are outlined in bronze at a limestone surface which stretches 13 meters. It's the work of British pop artist Julian Opie. Opie didn't make it to the island for the installation, instead entrusting the job to two technicians. It took them four days to get the piece up. Opie's artwork can be found around the world, but if you're looking to to purchase one, you'll need more than just some spare change. His work sells for tens of thousands of dollars. This piece, though, is free for the foreseeable future. 
And finally, former PLP Senator Mark Daniels is getting worldwide exposure, not for his politics, but for his pirouettes. When his daughter caught stage fright at rehearsals for a dance recital, Daddy was on point to be her confidence-boosting dance partner. Instagram footage on the performance went viral and attracted the attention of U.S. magazine show Right This Minute, who even reached out to Mr. Daniels to find out more about his ballet debut. I ended up next to Bella and I was just trying to make sure she was comfortable and confident. And so when the music kicked off and everybody had to go in motion, I just got into character. <laughs> followed the instructions of those that were on the stage and just tried to do my best. Okay, yeah, Dad, let's go little guy now. He's got the pirouette now. We need to call him Dad Arena. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely adorable. That's it for tonight. I'm Diane Brewer. Hope to see you again next week. Have a great weekend.